what's going on everyone we are back with another video um, this is actually the second time I had to record this because I got through the whole thing and was ready to jump into editing only to realize that none of the audio was present so for whatever reason it didn't record you know as I like to say technology is a beautiful thing until it malfunctions so be that as it may here we are back for take two once again four wheel studio audio differences that's why so what I had said in the video was that I wanted to uh, give respect and uh, talk about a little bit which I actually enjoyed watching uh, the South Sudan basketball team um, during this this run of international play and just to give a, a smattering of background on it, they, they came into, I would say, I don't know if prominence is the word that I want to use, but they, they came into the, the forefront of the minds of a lot of basketball and sports fans when they played that, <clears throat> that friendly match with the U.S. that came down uh, to the last second uh, bucket by LeBron to, to give the U.S. that one-point win. Um... And since then, they've been on a lot more um, sports fans and basketball fans radar than certainly would have would have been the case had the USA beat them by 47 points or something. And uh, what we are seeing is is a lot of the the brainchild and, and the resources, to be honest, of a former NBA player, Chicago Bull standout, uh, Lou Aldang, who is footing a lot of the the bill you know it's, it's truly a, a situation of putting your money where your mouth is and showing that um he's he's ten toes down uh for uh south sudan in in terms of, of doing that and and uh it really speaks to to what he has has been able to do along with uh, uh his staff and and and, and the people his team things of that nature because ladies and gentlemen understand this is a program right now that does not they don't have a uh, indoor um, facility so, you know they're old school they're, they're doing everything outside and they don't have a lot of the the uh, amenities and in, in, in things of that nature that that some of these other countries have and yet and still they're still able to field a team that one is competitive, uh, one that, that plays hard, they play tough, they play with grit, um, they don't back down, um, and they, they play as a team. They do fall in love with the three-point shot a little too much, I will say that. Um, I think that kind of cost them in their game against the U.S., to be honest. They were hitting the shot and kind of fell in love with it, even when it stopped falling. Um, but overall, they, they play hard. And that, I mean, for me, being an old school basketball fan, they, they play a lot of the ways uh, and, and show a lot of the things that, that I grew up and a lot of us grew up appreciating and watching. And again, I think that goes uh, to, to one where they've had to come from. Um, I think that goes to, uh, in terms of who, the, the, the leadership, um, you know, they're, they're coached by uh, Royal Ivy. Uh, a lot of them played Division One basketball. I'm trying to think. He might have been in the league for a little bit. Um, it's come a long way from what Hakeem Ward did to him in the, the tournament. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. Um, but they have just done a tremendous job um, in, a, in a short period of time in terms of building this program. Um, they've got uh, NBA talent. That, that, that has already cycled through what they've built already. So that's a clear indication that they're headed in the right direction. And here's the thing that that, that struck me in terms of, of this, what you're seeing right now, this is, I don't want to say from from our from, from from the perspective of those that have that are just becoming familiar with them, this may be the basement um, in terms of being on an international stage. But considering what they have, have shown, the, 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 the direction is only up from here. They're only going to get better. And so what that means is that 
uh, the players that you see now, the players that are going to cycle through and begin to their program are going to be better, um, which means eventually you're going to start seeing uh, players from South Sudan have more of a presence, you know, potentially on uh, collegiate American rosters, uh, NBA rosters, and other professional leagues around the world. Um, and then you're, you're going to see, um, you know, them being able to put more money into their national program, uh, which means they're going to have better training methods and things of that nature. They're going to be able to uh, earlier identify even more of their top end talent and and work with that talent and develop it and to help it hone it even further. Uh, so this is this is just the beginning. Um, <clears throat> you know, they're they're again taking the approach uh, of of building a program. The the example that I use um, when looking at international play and things of that nature, uh, when in comparing it to the United States, it's like in college when you look at. You know, and, and you see it throughout the season. You see it in, in, in March, whether you have these teams, while they may not have the, the top end talent of say, a Kentucky, a Duke, a North Carolina. Um, these guys, what they they lack in in that talent, they make up in experience because they've stayed in school, they played together, uh, they know each other, and so they've built a program, and that experience, that knowledge that playing together can help close that gap because they can either capitalize on mistakes that the very talented but youthful teams, um, blue chip teams that they will play, or they can use that experience to force those guys into mistakes that they can then capitalize on. So that's why you see some of these teams, you're like, man, they should, man Kentucky should be killing these dudes. But the games are close, and, and sometimes you will see uh, these other schools uh, defeat them. And so they're they're opting not to take the AAU approach that the, the United States does uh, in terms of them basically just slapping a whole bunch of very, very high-end talent together uh, for a limited amount of time. These guys will play together for a period of a few weeks, whether these other teams have played together for years, and, and you will see it. Uh, bear itself out some of these games and so <clears throat> I think if they continue to take that approach um, then you're going to be hearing a lot more um, from South Sudan basketball on the international stage on various professional stages as well and I just want to take my hat off to um, uh, Luol Dang and uh pass it oh I did and um, South Sudan basketball for what they they have accomplished in a relatively short amount of time so um so with that being said um, salute to those guys and and um, looking forward to seeing what they do so they're one of my, my favorite teams and, and again um, just much respect to Lou all day Royal Ivy and, and everybody over um, at South Sudan Basketball. So um, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Um, thank you all for spending a few moments with us. And I'll be back with more videos real soon. Take care, everyone. Be sure to tell the ones that you love that you love them. Peace.